Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. During my trip to Gamescom, I had time to talk with indie developer Runner Duck and check out their World War II strategy survival game, Bomber Crew. I liked what I saw, and I wanted to share it with you here, because it's got some really cool historical aspects to it, and I like helping out small studios. If you're wondering how small, Bomber Crew was programmed by one person, while another did the visual designs. I'm not being paid to talk about the game, it was just really neat to see in action. The way Bomber Crew works is very similar to another game you might be familiar with, Faster Than Light, or FTL. The goal of Bomber Crew is to guide your Avro Lancaster bomber and its crew through a campaign of missions. Throughout your journey, you'll upgrade and customize your bomber, improving its engines, guns, and more. You'll also select and outfit your crew. And crew selection and placement is vital. Like real people, each crew member has a particular set of skills. For example, a gunner will be much more adept at downing enemy planes than repairing a damaged part of the plane. Crew members will gain experience and level up as you progress. Over the course of the missions, you'll be tasked with a variety of objectives, ranging from aerial reconnaissance to bombing runs. You'll have to guide your plane to the target, and I mean do everything manually, from raising the landing gear to opening the bomb bay doors. In the way you have to take photos, I was reminded of one of my favorite childhood games in Pokemon Snap. If you miss an objective, that means you have to circle back around to complete it, wasting fuel and exposing your plane to more enemy fire. It sounds pretty simple, but Bomber Crew is a survival game. If you fail to raise your landing gear, it can be shot away. If you open the bomb bay doors too soon, flak can actually detonate the bomb load, miss objectives or stray off course, and you'll run out of fuel. Crew members can also be injured or killed. On top of this, you'll also have to contend with enemy fighters and aces. In the demo I saw, one of the aces flew a Heinkel 219 with the upward-firing Schrega Musik system. The game's programmer, John Wingrove, explained different aces employ different tactics, and that kind of means they have different personalities. The boss in the demo, Merrick Yeager, likes to showboat and was actually flying upside down while firing the Schrega Musik system. It's a bit silly, but obviously from the game's visual aesthetic, Bomber Crew doesn't take itself too seriously. Still, there are some fascinating aspects to this game. The world in Bomber Crew is actually a scaled-down map of Europe, and there are some noticeable landmarks. While I was talking with John at Gamescom, I noticed a familiar coastline and I asked, is that Point to Hawk? As it turns out, it was, and that's just one of many historical locations represented in the game. Perhaps the most interesting bit of Bomber Crew gameplay I saw came when an engine caught fire and the engineer climbed out on the wing. That might sound far-fetched to you, but sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. In 1941, New Zealand pilot James Ward actually climbed out onto the wing of his Wellington bomber at 13,000 feet to try and extinguish flames caused by enemy fire, a feat the developer admits was the basis for the animation in game. While Bomber Crew is a different kind of game than what I normally cover here on the channel, I cover games I like, and this one caught my eye. Bomber Crew will be available on Steam October 17th and will arrive on Xbox One and PS4 at a later date. If this game appeals to you, head over to my Twitter where I'll be giving away a plush pigeon modeled after the in-game carrier pigeon. While you're over there, you can also follow Bomber Crew as well for the latest news on the game. Again, they're a small dev team, so show them some love. What are your thoughts on Bomber Crew? Tell me in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share on social media like Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.